welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to take a look at the Sanyo MW1L. And we've got a fantastic example here, actually. This one's all complete and original. You can see the box just at the back there. And indeed, it comes with the original packaging. So there's the main unit itself with the polystyrene end caps. You've got the polythene bag that it came in and indeed the original Sanyo instruction book as well. Now, this particular example has been in its box for quite some years, one would imagine. So I thought it was time that we got it out, tested it to see if it still works and maybe remedy the things that don't work. So maybe it needs a service. We'll clean the heads. We'll maybe change the belts if we need to clean any switches, any of that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get this package in away and get the back off. Just before we do get the back off, it might be an idea to actually try it out and see if it works. So interestingly enough, this little thing just fell out of the packaging and that to me looks like a remnant. I don't know if you can see that, it keeps falling off, but that looks like a remnant of belt or something. It's a bit sticky and a bit grim. So we, there might be trouble ahead as the song goes. So we'll take a look at it, but it's a lovely looking unit actually. Yes, it needs a deep clean, quite nicely specced. You've got the uh, microphones left and right just there. You've also got on the side, you've got inputs for stereo left and right microphone inputs. And you've also got speaker outs as well. If this wasn't enough, you could actually put it out to a bigger system and create even more noise. But anyways, let's see whether or not this works. So first thing we shall do is put it onto radio. Actually turn the volume to zero a minute. I don't know how crackly these pots are gonna be. Okay, well, something happened. All right, well, there's the radio. There we go, and the FM stereo light is working as well. But if I just tune this away, you can see that coming and going. Sharing offensive messages in a WhatsApp group. Lovely, good stuff. There's also there's also a fine tuner on this on the side as well for your you've got short wave, medium, and long wave. So it's a four band radio. There's also let me have a look. We've got a split volume as well. So there's left and right volume controls, and you've got your tone control on the top. So we know the radio works. Now then, next thing, does the tape work? So, probably not given that I think I just find a bit of belt loose. So I'm not going to bother putting a tape in. I think we'll do tape, right, tape two, which is this one. The eject is there and we'll press play. And yep, I can definitely hear a motor. Can you hear that? Yep, so the motor's running. Obviously nothing else is happening. I'll just try re uh, rewind. Same again, and fast forward. Okay, nothing doing. So we'll move on to tape one, which is actually this one here, and eject that and press play. And again, I can hear a motor, sounds like a different motor. Fast forward, nothing, and rewind. Nothing again. I'm just gonna press play again, just to check the Capstans, yeah, nothing's happening on either of those. So I don't know yet whether it's a common a common motor or a common belt to these. So I think what we'll do is get it open. One thing's good though is the radio works. So that's great. We know the, the power amp and all that kind of stuff is good. The aerial itself incidentally is intact and the tip is present there, so that's great. All the original knobs and switches are present on this which is also great news because I always say it's always nicer to repair, refurb or restore something that's complete to start with. If parts are all missing or snapped or broken, it, you're never going to get a great result at the end anyways. So I think that's a quick evaluation. Next stage then is to crack it open and see what's inside. OK, it's my first time inside one of these, to be honest. So we'll explore this together. Incidentally, the battery terminals are nice and clean. They'll need a little bit of a rub, I think, because they've not been used for years, but there's no reason why it wouldn't work off batteries. And indeed, we can try that at the end. It looks like seven and a half volts DC, five batteries. So. There 
there should be one, two, three, four, five screws, most of which don't want to come out. I'll just try and tip this back. Well, one of them's out anyway. The rest will fall out during the uh, proceedings, no doubt. So, I don't know what needs to, oh, there's another screw. I don't know what needs to actually come out here. So, I'm gonna take the volume, tone, and tuning knobs off because I suspect I'm getting covered actually look at this I'm getting covered in black goo already so I expect I don't know if someone's maybe just going to lose the fine tuning knob as well I suspect somebody's probably already maybe had a go at this because there's bits of oh, it's getting all over the casing and everything so uh, I think that's all of the screws out so if we eject I don't know if we need to eject the mechanism for this, but let's have a look. Ah, also there's a screw I've just noticed on the top, underneath the tuning dial. So maybe that's the one. Ah, another one on the tone as well, just in here. There we go. Cheeky. Right, is that all of them? Let's have a look. Right. What else are we missing? But that is it. So as usual, you just have to be careful, really. Right, what do we know? What do we know? Right, so everything's... Okay, the bad news is everything's point-to-point -point soldered. So we'd have to end up unpicking and ungluing the cables and unscrewing speakers and stuff like that. Or we can... But then again, the good news is we can still get to everything here. So this is all good. I'm just going to check the camera position, make sure you guys can see what's going on. And then hopefully we'll be able to start making a, making some headway on these tape mechs. OK, now you are slightly further away than usual because, of course, this is such a long unit. But we might bring you in to the tape mechs in a moment, I think. OK. The first job, I think, appears to be to unpop the dial gauge. There we go. We can take that off and clean that. Good. That allows us access to the tape mix. But I just want to be careful because I, what I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is get ourselves into trouble with the dial gauge there the dial cord sorry is there look you can see that working away quite nicely just there so okay i think what i'm going to do all of the heads the head cables are soldered onto the board so I think this is going to be a case of unscrewing these and seeing what happens, I think. Seeing what comes away first. All right, so that one's got the cable ties on it. Which you might undo now. It was two motors, incidentally. Okay, so this screw was the longest and the other three are the same size. So, okay, we've also got one on the motor. Looks like you've got trim pot adjustments for the speed on the motors as well. Always nice to have. Okay. 
Okay, good. So there's a bit of luck. I might just unpick those cables from there. That earth goes onto there anyways. Okay, and that's the microphone. So the, the brown one here is the microphone cable, but it goes through the housing from the cassette just to keep it tidy. I'm just going to take this other cradle piece out. There we go. I'm going to pull this board away as well with the FM stereo light on it. Get that out of the way. Good. Now this whole cradle can come out. That's better. Good. Because now, now we can get to the belt and we can see, I'm just gonna use, I'll come in for a closer look in a minute. But we can see Ah, oh, brilliant, there's some belt. At least we got that out before it collapsed on us. Good. Good, I was worried, I was really worried in case that was just going to turn to goo. So that's good. And we'll be able to get another belt on there easily enough in a moment. And I think I am just going to do one mech at a time actually on this. I am just going to do one mech at a time, otherwise we end up with stuff everywhere. So I'm going to come in for a slightly closer look on the mechs, I think, and wipe my hands to save me getting more goo all over the mechanism. And we'll be back in a moment. So first off, I'm just going to run a little bit of a little bit of IPA across the pulley surfaces. You see a little bit of stuff's come off of there, but nothing major. And I can just about get in there as well. If not, you can always use a little bit of string or maybe some tissue. And just gently put that into the groove on the pulley. But just make sure that they are clean because otherwise you'll get imperfections in the run out. And that's when you get your wow and flutter then. But I've got to say that uh, despite the belt falling apart, it managed to throw itself off of the pulleys before it did go to jelly so we've had a close escape with this one right well i'm going to find a belt to put on here and uh, you'll pick it up in a moment actually first thing i will do just have a cursory clean under here as well get rid of this fluff and just be careful because we are near the right uh, the antenna wires and the dial cord as well so just be a bit careful near there okay at this stage i've got no idea what size the belt was supposed to be because it's fragmented i can tell from feeling under there that that one's also gone so that you can't use that as a reference and it may be different anyways so the next stage will be to get this keeper plate off i think to give us access and what we'll do is we'll just dry, we'll dry fit a couple just to test them. Interesting, actually, because this comes away from the motor now. So we do kind of have to leave. I think what we'll do is we'll leave one on. Just enough to slip the belt under to test it. Because obviously <laughs> you can't test the belt if the motor's not connected in some way to the mechanism. So that's an interesting one. Right, well, I found a belt, which I think is about right. 
and for anyone that's interested it seems to be about 67 millimeters by one square section and like the wally that i am and this is where you can get ahead of yourself sometimes and also where <laughs> this is quite funny really it's a bit of a bit of a schoolboy error but obviously when you haven't got anything to guide you and you've got no original got no original belt or anything like that it's just occurred to me that i didn't have to move all of this in the first place i know i said it's quite going to be quite tricky to there we go to look to measure everything when the motor isn't attached to the mechanism i just realized that actually the path of the belt doesn't even conflict with any of that so there was no need in the first place so there we go so we don't have to take this keeper plate off that all that does is detaches the motor or the mechanism away from the motor so i'm just giving this a cursory spin to see how it's looking and i've got to say that feels that feels pretty good to me i'm fairly happy with that to be honest right to make sure that everything lines back up from whence it came i've got to say this is when sanyo had moved to their slightly cheaper production methods and what have you and so there's no positive engagement pins on this all the screws are left to kind of float around a little bit and that can be a bit annoying sometimes because occasionally things don't quite line up where they're supposed to as a result of that but there we go so just checking that there's nothing trapped underneath and we'll go ahead and get that buttoned back up i think okay so that mech is now back in place everything seems to work fine in terms of positioning and the mechanism is okay in terms of also that the grease isn't uh, gunked up or anything like that everything's kind of free to move so i'm leaving it as is We'll worry about these other cables a bit later. So next job then is to take this one out. So with this one, ah, ugh. okay, I don't know if you heard that, but a piece of belt just fell off as well. So, and it's, it's stuck to the tweezers, so that, that doesn't bode well. But in any event, we'll see how we get on. Right now that one is screwed there and then the counter mechanism is screwed on those two screws there plus that one so i did wonder whether i could just detach the counter belt which seems actually to be okay but i think we're gonna have to get it out anyways Get the counter mech off because that's going to come away that's going to come away with the uh with the mech but we may find it's actually in our way as well so i think i'm going to just take it off because what i don't really want to do if i'm honest is have to be turning this over to work on the belt and find myself snapping the mech or something so I'd rather just remove the counter for a moment, I think. And to be honest, although the belt looks OK, we might just put a new one on just because. So anyways, you'll see how easy that is. The pulley's just on the back of there. And then this one just goes oops onto the reel on there. So there we go. Right, we'll just get that counter away for a minute. And hopefully I won't forget to put it back. OK, so the screws are out. It should be second verse same as the first with a bit of luck but this time we are you won't quite see it from your angle but we've got quite a short cable unfortunately for the power lead to the motor and it's soldered at both ends which means that if we can get this away it's going to have to go in the general direction over there so I'm just being super careful at the moment to make sure that we don't cause any nasties. And you know what? 
I think I'm just going to let, let sleeping dogs lie a bit and leave it there. I can see, right, let me just check this one. Okay, there we go. So all three, oh, that was close, look. Right, all three pulleys have got belt residue on them. So we'll get that one off. We'll get this small one off the motor if we can. Come on. Yes. And the large one here. Because if we can do this, come on. I'm trying to do this with, ugh. Trying to do this to make as little mess as possible. Of course, typically, the one that's gone nasty on us is the one we can't quite really get in to clean that easily. Ideally, we'd want to turn this all over and get this out, but uh, well, I suppose we still could. But in my experience with these Sanyo units of this era, Actually, the um, the brass bush and everything else, once that's out, you can't really get it back in properly and you end up snarling up different cogs in the mechanism and all the rest of it. And it becomes a becomes a bit of a mess, to be honest. So I'm just I'm just going to. This is supposed to be a quick, quick and easy video today, so I'm not going to strip the whole mechanism out. We're just going to clean this up. What I'll do is I'll get some uh, some decent paper, shop towel and some IPA, clean that up. And by the looks of it, there's no reason why this won't be the same size belt as that one. So when you rejoin me, this will be clean and we'll have the other belt on. Hopefully. OK, now the new belt's on. And I measured that more like 75 mil, so it may well be different, actually, to the other one. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get this back in. And obviously the placement's important for this one because this one actually moves the actuator there underneath for the array switch, which is just there. Right, okay. Okay, the counter can go back on with a new belt. I'm just checking that that's turning OK, which it is. Good stuff. OK, next stage then, I think while we're here, is we'll clean the heads and the pinch rollers. Obviously very easy to do. Whilst we can get, of course, there's a, a raised head on this one. All right, and the pinch rollers. Always worthwhile doing this one. They actually look okay, they're not distorted or anything like that. But you can see, you can probably see the stuff that's coming off. But it feels like we're actually getting to the rubber though, which is good. But it's not ferrite, we're just bringing back the, uh, the alcohol is just breaking down the top surface of the rubber. Cutting it back a bit to give it some more bite. And then in a moment, we'll just clean the uh, clean the capstans as well. There we go. Now, the other switches and everything else weren't really making any noise. This would be the time if you wanted to, to get in here and clean the pots, if that was the case, if they were crackling, but actually, they were all absolutely fine, so there's no point 
there's no point stripping those out and relubing them if we don't need to. So I think the next stage will be to just generally have a quick zhuzh. I don't think there's any real grime in here to get out. It's pretty good actually. So before I put everything back together properly, I think we'll just um, hook up a little bit of voltage to this and just see if it's working, make sure it's okay. Okay, I've just hooked up seven and a half volts DC to the board just there and you can hear the radio. Admittedly, it's not tuning yet because the aerial's not attached. However, what we can do now is just put this back nice and tidy for a moment, following the original cable ways. Right, so let's try a tape. So I think that's tape, that's tape one, I think, which I think was that one, is that what we said? I can't remember what any of these controls are. So there's play. Okay, well, something's working. Good, all right, well, that's, that's promising. So we've cleaned the heads and that anyway, so that's okay. Let's just put in, let's just put in a little bit of music and see what happens then. Right, I think that's play. No, fast forward, rewind. Uh, there's play. Ah, that's the switch. Okay, that's that's great. That's working all right. Fast forward, rewind, stop, play with pause on, release pause. Good. It is running a tiny bit slow though. So we can do that here. Now, I don't know if it's what sort of screw we've got in this. So we're going to have a little bit of a... Okay, I can feel something in there, so play. Okay, good, so that's all right, so that one's sweet. So the next one then. Yay. Same again. Okay, that's good. So I'll just back onto this one and oops, play. And this one. Good. That's close enough for me for now. What you can do is get a uh, an actual calibrated tape now and and do that. But that's how you do it. Is just to just to tweak them here, and that's dead simple to do. Obviously, whilst you can get to them, so that's fantastic. All right then. So we know the radio works. We know the tape decks are working. So I'm just going to disconnect my auxiliary power supply here. And the next job is just to get this dial gauge back on. So 
just give that just giving that a little bit of a little bit of a wipe and just gently wipe off any residue there nice all right so we'll get this back in but first up we'll go and put this uh we'll go and put this guide back on It's on nice and snug and moves across properly. We'll just put the screw through this one. Marvellous, or not quite so marvellous because I actually forgot to put the little FM light back in. So we'll try that again. Okay, quick idiot check. And don't forget the little cable ties as well, of course. Okay, so idiot check then. All the screws that were in are back in. We've cleaned the heads, the capstans, the pinch rollers. We've changed the counter belt, both of the belts on the main drive, so the cassette decks. We've got the little lights back in behind the dial gauge. That's all wiped down and clean. So I think all that remains is to get the cover back on. Actually, I'm just going to give it a quick cursory wipe inside. You can't see this, but I'm just giving the, uh, the inside of the window a quick wipe because that will never have been done. And now we will get this back together. And it will actually just come in and snap down in a minute, I think. Also, I've noticed that there are remnants of belt that have got caught up at some point. So we'll um, just be mindful of that, I think. Um, anyways, I'm just going to wrestle with this for a moment and then we'll be back to get the knobs and stuff on. Well, I'm just going to give it a quick clean up now and a polish. But the first thing, I don't know if you can hear this, but that aerial is quite pitted and quite corroded. So I've got some aluminium foil here with a bit of uh, PTFE lube on there as well. So if I just give this a bit of a quick polish for you, and you'll see, maybe not straight away, but if I give this a wipe down, you can, well actually I'll just put my fingers, you can see that black that comes off and straight away you can probably see that gleam comes back you'll see it in the final pictures anyway but if you listen to how dry that is compared to how silky smooth that already is we'll carry on we'll do the whole aerial like that and then um, get on and clean the case and when we're cleaning the case i always like to use a wet wipe or something like that and a maybe like a cocktail stick or a kebab skewer and then you can get right in right into the corners now you won't see a lot of this stuff, but it's actually it just makes it worthwhile just to know you've given it a decent clean. And also there's certain angles that you can still see behind and underneath stuff. And I think the attention to detail here is, is lovely. And that's what kind of finishes it off in the end. I think if you're doing this to make money off it, it would almost never be worth your while. But if you're doing it because you love what you do, and that attention to detail and that almost sort of restoration, as it were, is perfect. Just go around this now and I'm just going to clean up the entire, clean the entire unit from top to toe. And all of the knobs that have come off, I'll um, give, get a toothbrush on those, give them a good scrub, get the grime out of as many of the nooks and crannies as we can. And we'll be back with a final reveal in a moment. So here it is then. The amazing Sanyo MW1L. I mean, how long is this thing? I felt like Luke Skywalker going through the Death Star at the end there, doing the B-roll shots. But um, anyway, there she is. So it came in not working at all. It'd been in its box, all nice original packaging and everything. Obviously, it hasn't been used for years. Both of the belts are completely disintegrated. 
So we've managed to clean those up and get new ones on and the counter belt as well for good measure. The switches were pretty clean to be fair, so uh, no need to do anything too much with those inside. Just giving it a proper deep clean and a polish, clean the heads, the capstans, pinch rollers, all that kind of stuff, polish the aerial. Yeah, and just giving it some TLC and brought it back to what I hope is normal working function. So to that end, I'm just gonna try and put the radio on. So we'll put that on now and there we go. And you can see the FM stereo. My sister's been singing too. Oh, Lovely. Really? And I heard he's been seeing Kelly at number 56. Good stuff. And I can tell you the other wavelengths do work well as well. With the uh, artificial lights we've got in here at the moment, it'll cause a lot of buzz and interference and stuff. So I'll spare you that. But suffice it to say, they're working beautifully. Okay, so the next switch on here is tape two, which is actually this one here. So we're going to put a tape in now and have a listen to this. And away we go. I want to make love to you. But your friends are calling on you. Buy you with whiskey and gin. Good stuff. And we'll try the other one. So we've got tape one. Why it's not tape one and tape two, I don't know. But far better people than I made that decision. So here we go. Here's tape one. Fantastic. So all the lights work, all the switches and knobs work properly. We adjusted the tape speed. I think you can actually get to the motor from there's some tiny little holes just under the cassette doors as well. So we adjusted them, of course, in situ whilst we were doing the belts and everything, which was dead easy to get to then. But I think you can actually, if you wanted to, make fine adjustments just there as well. But anyway, there it is, the Sanyo WMW1L. And yeah, what a beast. It's the first one we've had in on the channel. So I thought you might like to see what it's about and have a look at it and see inside. So I hope you did enjoy the video. And if you have one, perhaps you even found it useful if you're looking to do some maintenance or service work on your own. But thank you very much for watching. Please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell. We've got boom boxes. We've got all sorts of stuff, eight tracks, personal stereos, vintage games, all kinds of retro gear. So if you're into all of that, then you know where to find me. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. All the best for now.